And as the Challenger roars off the pad Sunday morning, it'll be carrying a cargo looking a great deal like what might be on your breakfast plate right now. CNN's Tom Mintier reports from Louisville, Kentucky. While it may look like an ordinary egg you might fry in the skillet for breakfast, it isn't. These eggs are headed for a trip on the Space Shuttle Challenger to space. John Bellinger, a 20-year-old Purdue University student, is the keeper of the eggs. He was selected by NASA in 1983 for his science experiment to study the effects of weightlessness on developing embryos. Bellinger's curiosity about eggs began as a high school freshman. You know, I was thinking, if man is going to space, you know, for the future, what is this weightless environment going to do? Is man, can man have children in space? What began as a basic birds and the bees question soon expanded to include questions like, would a space chicken look or taste different? Kentucky Fried Chicken decided to sponsor Bellinger's project, and he now conducts his research in a laboratory at the Chicken Conglomerate's International Headquarters in Louisville, Kentucky. A total of 32 eggs will make the trip to space. Originally, Bellinger's project would carry a single egg. But when you receive a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, you take advantage of it. With each design modification, the experiment grew. The eggs will be all fertilized and hatch about a week after the space shuttle returns. But how the eggs react to near zero gravity will be the key. On Earth, we have gravity, which causes the yolk to fall to the bottom of the egg. In space, the yolk will be in a more suspended, more natural, more neutral position. And my hypothesis states this will produce a more positive growth effect. In other words, we'll have a better type of chicken produced. While the 32 eggs fly in space, an identical number in a control experiment on Earth will be studied. Because gravity pulls the yolk to the bottom, they will have to be rotated by hand. The astronauts will check the space eggs daily and ensure the moisture sponges on board the experiment don't dry out. The egg crate has already been tested on NASA's vibration table and launch simulator. Not a single egg cracked, and John Villinger says all hatched normally. With Kentucky Fried Chicken involved in the project, some might wonder if the hatched space chickens will wind up smothered in the Colonel's secret herbs and spices. The answer is no. Half the eggs will go to the lab for yolk studies, and the other 16 will be allowed to hatch and achieve space celebrity status, ensuring them a long and pampered life on Earth. If John Bellinger's experiment is successful, that age-old question of which came first, the chicken or the egg, will have a new answer. In space, the egg, of course. Tom Intier, CNN, Louisville, Kentucky. For liftoff, Sunday morning at 9.36 a.m. Eastern Time with teacher Krista McAuliffe aboard. I don't think any teacher has ever been more ready to have two lessons in my life. I've been preparing these since September, and I just hope everybody tunes in on day four now to watch the teacher teaching from space. At uh, Cape Canaveral, Christy McAuliffe, a teacher from New Hampshire, is completing her preparations today for a flight in space. She'll be in the shuttle Challenger, which is scheduled to lift off Sunday morning. Among other things, she'll give two lessons from space, which will be broadcast live to schoolrooms across the country. Weather conditions are improving slightly. NASA officials now believe they will be able to launch tomorrow and avoid those embarrassing weather delays that plagued the last flight of the shuttle. Right now, things look good. And I just hope the weather outside uh, continues to cooperate with us. Meteorologists are releasing weather balloons regularly, checking the upper atmosphere. Rains are expected during the night, but the forecast calls for clearing in the morning. There is a chance of some fog, but it should burn off before the beginning of the window. The first teacher in space, Krista McAuliffe and her six crewmates, spent most of the day reviewing flight plans. McAuliffe's parents say the 37-year-old New Hampshire school teacher remains calm, but they admitted they were not. I'm starting to get a little knot in my stomach right now. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be later. We're getting a little bit of trepidation as we're getting closer and closer. But as for their daughter... She's just anxious to go. Yeah. This will be the first launch from the newly refurbished Pad 39B since a joint U.S.-Russian space probe 10 years ago. NASA hopes the second launch pad will keep periodic weather and technical delays from disrupting the space agency's tight, ambitious flight schedule. Bruce Hall, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center. The countdown is continuing smoothly, and the shuttle crew is preparing for the mission, but the forecast may get in the way of a successful liftoff. A cold front from Texas is expected to move through Florida just about launch time. It may bring clouds and rain. If Challenger does get off the ground, it will be a history-making voyage carrying the first teacher in space. 
Shirley McNerney has more on teacher Krista McAuliffe. Krista McAuliffe is now at the Kennedy Space Center. I don't think any teacher has ever been more ready to have two lessons in my life. I've been preparing... Officially, Krista is now in quarantine, only allowed to see members of her family, and only after they have first seen a doctor. How's Krista doing? She is so excited and happy and relaxed and the whole, the whole good feeling. Do you have a little bit of uh, trepidation? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, as the day comes closer, I feel a little bit more. Particularly now when the, uh, the Columbia went up, I have watched them all go up and thought it was wonderful, got excited. But when I saw that take off, my stomach just came up and went back down. That never happened before. The Space Shuttle Challenger itself is now out on Pad B, surrounded by a revolving service structure. When the actual launch takes place, Krista's husband and children will watch from the roof of the Launch Control Center. Krista's backup, teacher Barbara Morgan, taught one of the live PBS Mission Watch programs for children. As for Krista herself, she went flying on an STA, a shuttle training aircraft which simulates landing. Her pilot, Ken Baker, a future astronaut. Did she seem nervous or anything? No. Nope. Seemed to have a good time. CNN will have live coverage of the shuttle launch scheduled tomorrow morning about 9.30 Eastern Time. That's 6.30 out west. Good evening and welcome to the Weekend Report. I'm Lisa Schweitzer at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where the countdown continues for tomorrow's launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger with its crew of seven, including New Hampshire school teacher Krista McAuliffe. But a cloudy and rainy forecast is threatening tomorrow's launch, and officials here are keeping their fingers crossed. We've established a meeting this afternoon, or this evening, I should say, at 9.30 to assess the weather uh, before we tank, uh, start loading fuel into the external tank. When the Challenger finally does lift off, it will spend a week in space. And while most of the attention is on the space teacher, there are also six other astronauts on board. I feel very fortunate to be on, on flight with the, this crew, but there's a lot of difference between a payload specialist or a space participant and an astronaut. I mean, they go through years of training, and I've had a glimpse of a lot of the things that they've done, but um, I do not understand an awful lot that goes on aboard the shuttle. Challenger's crew will deploy a tracking satellite and observe Halley's Comet. They'll also oversee an Indiana College student's prize-winning experiment measuring weightlessness on embryo development using chicken eggs. It took me three times before I ever became a national winner. And maybe it would take you four or five, but just think that one time my ship came back home, look what it's done for me. You know, I'll be able to say, hey, I have a project on the space shuttle. But for the non-scientist, the draw of this mission is McCullough. This Girl Scout troop from South Carolina raised $2,000 to see a former Girl Scout lift off into space. We're going to stay and watch it go off. And no matter what the weather. No matter what. <laughs> If the weather cooperates, the New Hampshire school teacher and the rest of the crew will lift off at 9.36 tomorrow morning. Excited, thrilled, tense, little tense, starting to get a little nervous. It may be nerve-wracking waiting for NASA to send your wife into space, but when it's your mother, that's another story. Krista's son Scott confided to me he's a bit bored by all the fuss. He's really looking forward to going to Walt Disney World in a few days. Scott told me he also wouldn't mind a vacation out of the country. His sister Caroline simply ducks out of the way of the camera. It's not easy when mom is doing something no other private citizen has done before. Steve, most of us look at this and see history being made. Do you ever think of Krista's place in history? Yeah, I do. I really, yeah, I really do. It's, uh, you know, Krista's well aware of the fact that she's, she's not going up because she's who she is. She's going up as a representative. And so we're both very aware that she's representing ordinary people and it's, it's a new age. I mean, ordinary people are going into space tomorrow. I think that's great. So do all the people at this reception, thrown by three crew members. Several hundred friends of Krista's, also astronaut Greg Jarvis and Commander Dick Scobies, are here to relax the night before the launch. The family's also here, trying hard to relax. So we're trying to have everybody write a note in the book so she can have it that their thoughts have been with her anyway, even though she can't be here. But all the rest of the family is. So everyone is just waiting for the liftoff. But there is still the chance weather could force a delay. Steve told me that wouldn't bother him a bit. They, they don't delay it unless there's, it's not perfect, and that's fine with me. I don't, I, I'd be much happier if it went up when everybody thought it was perfect than to go up on a chance basis. Tonight, Space Shuttle Challenger on Launch Pad 39B as the Mammoth spacecraft is prepared for liftoff. Crews were expected to begin loading some 500,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen into the external fuel tank, the large, expandable, torpedo-shaped object the shuttle is attached to. Earlier today, Air Force meteorologists predicted clouds and possible rain for tomorrow, 
forcing NASA officials to consider delaying the liftoff. Uh, as far as the teacher in space activities, I don't really think we get into a problem with her, with her lessons until we slip two days, I believe, and we've worked some contingency plans in the event uh, that were to happen so that uh, uh, Krista will be able to teach from space uh, during a school day. As NASA ground crews prepared the shuttle for launch, Krista McCoff and the rest of the crew remained near their quarters away from their families. Her schedule today, last-minute briefings, medical examinations, and just relaxing. Tonight, as he tried to relax, the space teacher's husband, Stephen, said a delay wouldn't bother him a bit. A delay? Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be thrilled if there was a delay. I was saying to somebody the other day, if they don't delay it unless there's, it's not perfect, then that's fine with me. I, I, I'd be much happier if it went up when everybody thought it was perfect, then they go up on a chance basis. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me live now is Jim Mizell, public affairs officer with NASA. Jim, how does the liftoff look for Monday morning? How does the weather look? The front is going to move through this area very rapidly tomorrow, bringing overcast clouds with a lot of rain, and we're expecting this to clear up Monday and have great weather for the launch. Is the launch a go for Monday, or will there be decisions to be made yet? We have a meeting at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon to discuss things such as decisions to be made, such as the weather. Right now, we think that the weather is going to be great for Monday. Okay, very briefly, if you can, tell our viewers why rain is a problem. A lot of people don't understand that. Well, the shuttle has heat-resistant tiles on the bottom, and these are like eggshells. They're very fragile to breaking, and the rain acts like BBs or shotgun pellets on the bottom of the orbit at the speed of sound as it climbs out of uh, Kennedy Space Center. Jim, you've been involved in an awful lot of these launches. How does the crew take a delay like this? Well, the crew is trained for this. They're very professional, and uh, they take it in stride. Uh, several of them are test pilots, so they're very familiar with uh, delays. Will Krista and her crew know tonight that there has been a delay? No, they want to sleep at their regular time tonight, and they won't be awakened until their regular time tomorrow morning in order not to break their sleep cycle that they use on the mission. Okay, so they will find out in the morning. That's correct. They will find out in the morning, and work will be set aside for them to do. The commander will go out and probably fly if the weather is good enough to fly, and everyone will study their plans for the mission. Will this one-day delay be a problem for future missions? No, this particular mission will not bother the next one, as we are now checking out the other spaceship in the orbit processing facility now. So they will just move the landing down one day, and the mission will probably last the same amount of time. Okay, all the activities that are scheduled during, during this mission will just be moved back one day we on the same that time a, schedule. A 24 hour uh, slip is what it amounts to. Okay, Jim Mizell, thanks very much for joining us okay. this evening. Okay, Sharon, there you have the story. The launch is now set for 9.37. NASA officials believe it will be a go. We'll know definitely tomorrow. I'm Lauren Baker reporting live from the Kennedy Space Center. Jim, uh, you were in contact with the people at the meeting. Tell us the details on the weather and how that will could affect the space shuttle flight. Well, the ceilings were lowering in tomorrow morning about 5 o'clock, and the clouds were coming in. They were going to have thunderstorms and rain. The space shuttle cannot go up through the rain at the speed of sound due to the heat-resistant tiles on the bottom. We're always interested in the safety of the flight crew and the safety of the shuttle, so based on those considerations, we decided to reschedule until Monday morning. Is the crew aware of the delay? The crew is asleep at the present time. They'll be awakened at their regular time, and of course, uh, they will then find out that they're going to have to wait 24 more hours before they go. It's going to be a big, big disappointment when they find out. Thank you very much. Jim Mizell, uh, spokesman here at NASA. Once again, the Space Shuttle Challenger flight has been delayed till 9.37 in the morning on Monday. We will have more information and briefings tomorrow. Reporting live at the Kennedy Space Center, this is Byron Barnett, the New England News.